Dr. Bob McCauley, and I'd like to talk to you today about blue-green algae, Klamath algae, Klamath Lake algae, or something called AFA, Afanas monflas aqua. That's what we're going to talk about. For many years, I have heard that uh, Klamath Lake algae, or blue-green algae, what is referred to as blue-green algae, um, is this incredible algae that comes out of Klamath Lake, Oregon. And um, it's really an incredible brain food, and it's really great for your health, and there's nothing else like it. And they sell it frozen, they ship it to you frozen, or they, some people tablet it, and then you thaw it out, and then you drink it down. And, um, okay, so that's what I've always heard about this stuff. Uh, I have tried AFA, Afanas monflas aqua, with this particular strain of algae that comes from Klamath Lake. That's Klamath Lake, Oregon. Like spirulina, AFA, Afanas monflas aqua, is a cyanobacteria. So it's not a true algae. So when they call it blue-green algae, it's really not an algae at all. Uh, spirulina is usually not called or referred to as blue-green algae. Some people call it that. Um, but that, again, technically they're both cyanobacterias, cyano, blue, bacteria. Uh, they're kind of half animal, half, um, half plant. And um, so they're in the same kind of family, if you will, uh, being two types of cyanobacteria. And um, there's a lot to be said um, that they're very similar to one another. As a matter of fact, the nutritional profiles are very, very similar. However, AFA has some things in it. Um, that I think you ought to avoid and you shouldn't take it and these are the reasons you shouldn't take it. Afanas monflas aqua or Klamath blue-green blue algae or Klamath lake algae, uh, it has toxins in it. It has some, some, some neurotoxins called anatoxin A and it has several of these and, and it's not anything that's really uh, going to hurt you or anything but it's more of a stimulating effect than it, than in nutrition. So a lot of people say, oh, this stuff is so good for your brain. It just makes you so smart or anything. Well, no, it's just a stimulant. I mean, caffeine does not help you think better. It stimulates you. It wakes you up. And so maybe your brain can work a little bit more efficiently or it's not, you know, it doesn't, it isn't fatigue. But again, it's a stimulant and a stimulant is not a nutrient. Another problem for AFA is uh, in being grown from in Klamath Lake is if you just look on a Google map or Bing and you'll see it, uh, you know, that lake is surrounded by, by farms and so there's a lot of farm runoff. I, I really find that a contamination issue, not to mention, you know, um, fertilizers and things you put on farms have a lot of phosphates and that's what causes the algae blooms that, um, you know, that you know, cause this AFA to go crazy and so they go out and, and harvest it and, and, um, and, and that's how they get their algae. So it's completely free. It's not g grown in a controlled environment like spirulina and chlorella are. It is just taken wild crafted right out of a lake. Now one of the claims that is made about AFA is that there is no other algae in the world that is like this. There's nothing else. Well, as, as I said earlier, this, the nutritional profile of AFA, Afanas monflas aqua, and spirulina are very, very similar to one another. They're very, very, you know, you look at them, you could hardly tell which is which, but just looking at a nutritional profile. Okay, so now my next question is, if AFA, Afanas monflas aqua, is so good, why not grow it in a controlled environment like you do um, a spirulina? We grow it in a controlled environment. I mean, spirulina can be taken out of the wild. It grows in lakes. Um, I have I've know in, up in Mongolia it grows in lakes. It grows in lakes in, in, uh, in Thailand. I think they're uh, in Cambodia. They've got some lakes there that have it. I wouldn't take it out of a lake. You want it in a controlled environment. You don't want to take something like that out of the wild at all. I mean, al algae is known for being a toxin sponge. So it's soaking up all the toxins that are in the, the lake or in the environment that you're taking it from. This is the advantage of growing something like an algae in a controlled environment. It's also the reason why I don't sell, you know, uh, marine phytoplankton, which comes out of the ocean. I, the oceans are not clean, pristine places like maybe they were centuries and centuries ago. They're very polluted. There's a lot of problems there. And not to mention, when you take something out of the ocean, you get all these other species of algae along with it. So again, if you're not, if you're going to cultivate it in a controlled environment, that's one thing. But if you're going to take it out of the, uh, you know, the, the out of nature, that's an entirely different thing. And I wouldn't have, I don't want anything to do with that. 
A final note is AFA, Aphanis monoflas agua, or Klamath blue-green algae, or um, Klamath lake algae, is it bad for you? No. It's fine. Go ahead and take it. That's not my point here. There's some anatoxins, uh, you know, there's some, some, you know, some neurotoxins in there. Okay, is, are they much worse than caffeine? Probably not. There's some studies maybe suggest they're not so good or whatever. Okay, that's not the point. To me, if you're going to eat algae, which I do every single day, this is what I've used for my protein. If you guys have seen any of my videos, you know this is my biggest, I'm the biggest proponent of chlorella and spirulina you're ever going to find out there. And for me, I want it out of a controlled environment. I'm Dr. Bob McCauley, and I'll see you guys next time.